uh, we have a check here plot. Uh, we've got our wheat, peas, lentils, chickpeas, soybeans, sunflower, sorghum, and corn in the way back. They're only 10 foot wide and they're about five rows of each and it only goes back to the flag there, that pink flag. Then it starts Duane's uh, field beyond it. So our corn is shorter because it was put in uh, later to kind of give you uh, the symptoms. And so this kind of gives you an idea. We had some problems with sorghum uh, emergence. Uh, and uh, corn you can see is shorter and it is somewhat ragged because of, of all the conditions we had. Um, uh, again, it just gives you an idea and as we go through these, we will point out some of the injury. Have your sheet ready and kind of take some notes because the whole idea is we're gonna go through these chemistries and then everything is repeated down there and you're gonna go figure out which one is which. Uh, so kind of going out in the field and, and dealing with it on what you might see in an uh, average day. Now you have to look out to start with here. The porta potty guy decided it was a shorter cut to go through the plots and so we lost some here uh, to start with. Uh, that's what we call mechanical damage uh, uh, as it goes forth. Uh, okay, when we start out here and we're just going to kind of go down through them because we got to get uh, done here by 11:30. Uh, 2,4-D amine versus ester. If you're going ahead of soybeans, which one do you want to use? Why do we use ester over amine? Less residual. Less residual. It totally doesn't make sense on everything we think. We think of ester being hotter and quicker acting and whatever but the half-life is shorter. And if we look at the beans here, we can see that the amine does have some more injury than the ester did. Even though we're at a 2x rate here of what you can do, you can go with up to one quart seven days prior to planting. And, but you can't go a quart. And so for you guys in the commercial business, don't ever write down a quart because it's 30 days. But if you're 15 and a half ounces, it's seven. So keep that in mind for your fines and all those types of things uh, uh, that comes into play. But uh, in order to get the injury here, we took and did it the day and Sometimes you're going to get it, sometimes you're not. What's going to happen? It's when you get a rain following uh, that it really shows up. When it washes that 2,4-D down around the seed, uh, that's when you take it out. And so uh, that can very much happen. Okay, there's the amine versus ester. The next one up is atrazine or the triazine uh, type, a pound and a half. Should we have any wheat with a pound and a half of atrazine? Not a lot, right. Well, there is a few there. And the thing you learn about is when you're trying to kill it, you can't. And when you're not, you'll kill it every time. Uh, it's kind of what I would expect. You won't take it all. There's always some plants that will kind of survive through. If we would have seen this earlier when it was first coming up, all the wheat would have come up and then it would have turned white. And the ones will die and some of them chuck it through and then they, they keep going. We can see the peas pretty much took out. The lentils didn't like it. Look at the chickpeas has some some tolerance. The soybeans are pretty much gone. The sunflowers that made it through are fine. And over the years, we have actually determined that sunflowers are about as safe as soybeans. And those two 
are generally the crops you can kind of get by with following atrazine, especially if you've been running a kind of a higher rate in your corn and you have a dry year and you need to rotate, you're going to be a lot better off with those two versus wheat or, well, chickpeas haven't did enough work to really say, but here would indicate that might be one you could tolerate a little bit too. If you do the test, you normally, if you have over a quarter pound atrazine left, you're stuck going back to corn or sorghum. You just can't deal with it. And the other part of it, you gotta remember, when you're doing a test, there's gonna be areas out in that field that are probably twice as high as what your test says. Your test is only as good as your sampling. Now, the other thing is, did you have any, uh, what'll show up when you have a, one you're running tight on is wherever there's overlaps in the fields or on the end of the fields where the sprayer might have come in uh, and, and went on to that headland, that's where you'll blow it out and there just won't be any. And so uh, if you got a guy that's looking at that, keep that in mind and uh, uh, follow that uh, as you're going and, and make him aware he might have that so it's something he would uh, want to be aware of. Uh, Balance Flex. Balance uh, is a pigment inhibitor. Uh, it came out on corn a number of years ago. Uh, they have changed it, added safeners, and uh, is a fairly reasonable product to use. Has some fairly good broadleaf and grass activity. Uh, surprised at uh, how good the wheat survived through it here. Um, you can see the beans are totally gone. So uh, the other thing to keep in mind this year, one of my most common questions this spring has been, I got all these volunteer beans because they were so dry and they shattered last year, what can I do for volunteer beans? Well actually on some of these treatments it'll give you a little bit of idea um, and this would have been just at an X rate, you know, and, and I think you'd have been pretty happy if you'd had this on for your volunteer bean uh, control. You can see the lentils are gone, the peas are gone. Um, the sorghum is hurt significantly. Uh, the corn, the corn does look fine, but uh, um, that kind of gives you an indication, but that would be the things to watch. Nothing really you can look. The other part is when you're out in the field and we don't have enough here that we can do it, but a lot of times you want to look at the roots too to see if they're affected. Uh, especially if we were looking at the uh, uh, treff land type things, some of those uh, can really have uh, root effects too. Um, Olympus Flex is Olympus plus Silverado, a couple of your uh, Downy Brome uh, chemicals, they're all ALS and so we have to be concerned about uh, uh, resistance developing with these products over time. Uh, lentils here a little bit, um, the peas, the chickpeas, the soybeans, um, and also the corn are showing some injury. Why would the corn? Because it's very specific to be used on wheat and when you're taking cheat out of wheat or wild oats out of wheat, you're looking close enough that you're a lot of times gonna affect other grasses too. Um, and you also are not wanting to be dealing with the product at a 2x rate uh, because you might see crop injury because they are fine line products. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, Spartan, and I gotta, if I get off one here because I'm walking and not talking, uh, make sure you tell me right away because um, the, the big thing here is uh, this is labeled on a lot of the pulse crops, but look at the lentils. 
It's labeled on peas, it's labeled on chickpeas. You can use it on, on soybeans, on sunflowers, and the lentils are totally gone. So, um, uh, on a lot of them, you know, that one's got a wide labeling, uh, real, works real good. It's a good water, water hemp chemical, um, and is one of those that, that's used a lot for broadleaf control in the pulse crops but make sure you're not with the lentils. And you can see the sorghum uh, somewhat is affected there too uh, with that. Okay. Here's Pursuit Pre at a 2X rate. You know, the wheat's gone. I mean, it... There's a few surviving. Are they going to mount to anything? No. Um, peas actually aren't doing too bad in there. If we look back, uh, the sorghum's totally gone, and the corn, and I was really hoping I had some nice injury symptoms, and I didn't get. Uh, what you will see on pursuit is what's called a bottle brush activity. I'm going to pass this around. There's just a real little bit showing this is actually too high a rate on corn. It's just burned the short roots off. You can see they're all just basically bare with no root hairs. But if you look right here, and if you want to pass that around amongst them, you can kind of see those the bottle brush roots are as roots will take and get real short hairs and a whole bunch of them and it'll look like a test tube bottle brush that you would use uh, in the roots. And uh, um, I was hoping I had better here, but uh, uh, it just doesn't do it. Uh, ALS inhibitor, again, in that same chemistry, you know, where we have to worry about the kochia uh, 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 resistance to it and those types of things come in. It's a good chemistry to use in that it does have some labeling uh, for peas, uh, for uh, soybeans, um, and some lower rates, I think also on the, on the chickpeas. Uh, next up. Um, Well, do we got any uh, wheat left? Nope. What did we talk about when we, uh, we were talking about having that little problem with uh, um, dealing with an inversion? That's how that wheat would look on that side hill. You know, if you have it wrong and it moves, it'll just take a, just be, and it'll be just a band like at whatever elevation you're looking. Um, but 10 ounces, we've hurt the lentils, we've definitely hurt the peas. Chickpeas got some there. Soybeans look fine. Sunflowers are gone. Sorghum's gone. Corn looks fine. Why would that be? Roundup ready. Now, Remember, though, there is still some hybrids out there, and you have to keep that in mind. You know, we're so used to everything being Roundup ready that sometimes you can get caught out at a field and you don't even think about, well, why is that hurt? You know, and, and it could be, uh, you always have to ask those questions. Uh, what, what kind of uh, corn do you have? Is it, um, and even to the point of, with, uh, you know, is it a smart stack? Because a lot of smart stack then also will have um, the ignite or that chemistry uh, tolerance in there because they use that for a genetic marker. And we'll get to that here in a little bit. Um, well, in fact, right here, here's the ignite. Um, 
and uh, that as far as, as chemistry is concerned, this would be just a half rate of Ignite. And it kind of shows you what it, Ignite does when, when you don't have enough of it or if the crop is too big. You can see here we burnt some leaves. It's fast acting. It'll burn off. But what happens immediately is all that happens. And uh, the corn, it looks like it might be affected a little bit. You can see a few brown leaves, but it's fine. And it is not corn that has tolerance to it. Uh, bear, a lot of times have seen that where uh, they thought they had that for corn sprayed with Ignite and it's going to reduce yield some but it's probably not going to take the corn out unless it's real small. Um, the peas. Took some out, but again, we can see the new is coming back and everything is fine. Really did the best job on the, uh, uh, the beans and the sunflowers as far as control them. Um, but again, it does what it does and, and then it's over. It's going to chuck right through it. Okay, Raptor post-emergence. We can see the wheat is somewhat gnarled and, and showing this twisted uh, symptoms. And that's kind of what will happen if you get a, a drift onto a wheat field that might be next door to it. Uh, that's typical of the ALS uh, type of injury. Uh, but otherwise, everything else, you know, at that rate, it's looking fairly good. And that, that's kind of what you would expect. So the key here to finding that one would be on the, on the uh, wheat. Now these next two here, we're going to kind of do together. We've got, uh, uh, these are both uh, ACAs inhibitors, POST and ASSURE. Well, what does POST and ASSURE do? Takes out grass, right? Did we take out the grass? Yeah, some, but is it good enough? We got a pint of post here and two ounces of sure. Why didn't it work? There was no surfactant or crop oil put in. So you, get, you still get some activity, but it doesn't give like it should. And usually, even at that rate, we will be able to go into corn. And what, what happens with corn if you have a low rate of post or sure on it? What, what's the telltale sign that you can always pick? With the grasses on those compounds, within a week, you will go and you can grab the center right out of them. They'll just be rotted in the center. And that's the way they work. It's from the inside out. And uh, if you know what wheat stem maggot looks like, when you pull a wheat head out and it's just all rotten, that's the same way with these chemistries on grasses. Very common for that, that to happen. Okay. The next one, we're again back to ALS chemistry. We've got Harmony at a half ounce rate. Harmony is a great compound for, uh, if you don't have resistant kochia, it's also fairly good on buckwheat. But what besides the wheat looks good in here? The corn. And even if you go into the corn, um, you're going to see some bands in the corn. Uh, yeah, I got enough. You will get what I call kind of a yellow flash uh, that'll show up 
uh, from that that rate. Uh, this one is almost exaggerated beyond, but it'll normally be more in a band. Um, you're going to have uh, some good activity, but Harmony's labeled on soybeans, right? But this is a half ounce of the 50 percent. And if we go back to the soybean label, is a quarter ounce of a 25% when we think of the old pinnacle. And so on a 50%, that would be an eighth of an ounce, would be as high as you can go on beans, and we're at a half ounce. And obviously that's enough that it's, there's injury there. And so keep that in mind. Again, rate and, and the crop uh, has a lot to do with it. Uh, germoxone. Now I'm going to kind of determine the age of the group. How many people have dealt with germoxone or Paraquat? If you've been in the game a while, you've probably dealt with it. If you haven't, you haven't. Uh, the other question for the end for the post test is Paraquat is the fastest acting herbicide that we have. If you're spraying that on a nice warm day, you don't need a foam marker even. Because when you get to the end of the field, you can look back and you can see where you just got done spraying. It will act that fast and start to discolor the crop. It's fairly toxic, but there is nothing better for a quick burn and knockdown if, if you're trying to deal with something. Now, uh, we're going to see more of it come back with the resistant issues. Keep in mind the one thing that always surprised me out of uh, Paraquat is uh, buckwheat, it, it's, it's really got to be small. Buckwheat will survive through pretty good on your normal pint rate. And again, this rate was a little bit lower, so we were just trying to show this would have been a half rate or eight ounces. We can see on the wheat we did some quick burn down, but a lot of it come through. Peas, the same way. There's a few of them. Lentils, actually uh, tolerated pretty good. So are chickpeas. The beans, we took off a set of leaves, but we didn't kill them. Sunflowers, we didn't have. But the corn and that, we screwed up pretty good. Uh, no, but they, they, they tolerated that lower rate. Just wasn't enough to take them out. Okay, the next one is probably the most interesting one. And if you look at the conditions at the time these were sprayed, we were in real hot, active uh, conditions. And uh, Flexstar, we normally don't think of as a grass compound. But given the right conditions, it definitely can. We can see the wheat is pretty much uh, taken out. Um, the other thing with it, I'm going to set this one back over so I got it, but um, is the corn. And I tried to do some checking on this and I can't get I don't know why it's doing this, uh, but we got a tremendous amount of uh, like a, an onion leaf effect and, and a wrap over. And the only thing again I can explain it with is just it was so active and so hot at the time. Um, you know the peas are completely gone. The beans, what you normally will see is the speckling on it. You can say well there's no speckling on there but there's holes in all those beans. Well, when you were past the initial burn, but we're not to the final effects, but what you will see a lot of times with herbicides that speckle is, if you have windy conditions, those specklings will go out and they'll end up being a hole. It just literally blows them out, especially in these windier areas. So sometimes the classic thing you got to think beyond it and what would have affected it to uh, cause that to happen? 
Uh, okay, and that's the other part. To get the Flex Star to do its injury, there's MSO in this one. And so that's going to add to it. And again, you, you have to realize we're trying to show injury symptoms or we're trying to do portray things. So uh, it, it will be different. But good question. Thanks for reminding me of that because we did have, normally you would with Flexstar, if you had good growing conditions, you would use a non-ionic surfactant. If you had hot and dry, you would use crop oil. You never use MSO because it gives too much heat. And, and so, and in this case, it really uh, heated her up. Okay, uh, Callisto, uh, corn product. We can see, you know, it really did a good job on the broadleaves. Three ounce rate. And the part, again, back to the question for this, what can I use on, to take the volunteer soybeans out? I would say Callisto at three ounces would be fairly good at accomplishing that. Now the question is, is one or two ounces enough? And that's what everybody wants to know. And I'm like, don't have it anywhere, can't. I, this is the first I'd seen at three even, so. Because um, that was one of those that was kind of iffy on what it was going to do or how it was going to act. Um, but the Callisto uh, is a bleacher. And if you look in the, the wheat here, uh, it's still showing the white signs and, and three or four days after application, I would have guessed that wheat would have been totally white. And it's chucked it through and then the green is coming out afterwards. But uh, it's a bleacher in the chemistry um, and, and that does white. Now, uh, I want you guys to kind of come back in here for these last three because uh, uh, the sunflowers is where you're gonna kind of differentiate everything here. And, and this is one that over time you get so you can figure it out. Uh, but we're basically dealing with growth regulator chemistry in all three of these. We're at low rates. Here we have four ounces of 2,4-D. And what it's did to the sunflowers here, it was basically too much for the beans. We're in between. The beans haven't chucked out of it yet. You can kind of see on them, they're starting to uh, throw out nodes or buds and, and will have leaves. Those will actually come back, but, but they're not far enough yet. The sunflowers are showing that classic where the nodes get kind of stacked up and that rapid growth is occurring and, and so it isn't really developing right. And basically with all of the growth regular chemistry, the way it works is it grows too fast so it blows itself up. It can't develop quick enough. But to me, this is typical of what you will see initially. The plant is real hard and callus-like and you'll have these leaflets that'll just form kind of together. That's the 2,4-D. Now the Banville, we always hear about the cupping with the Banville. The cup can actually go up or down. It, it's not one, well, this one's up and that one's down. You'll hear some guys commenting that. Normally it's more up, but to me, this is kind of classic of it, showing this. Yeah, again, it's hard, it's callous. The leaves are, uh, it also has this drawstring where you're like, the veins, you have just pulled them back and, and that's what causes the cupping. And that's why I say it can go up or can go down depending on the conditions. But the Banville, that is uh, fairly classic that way. The last one, and depending on where you're at, you may or may not ever have to deal with this, but this is a, an ounce rate of Tordon. And uh, there is nothing better for buckwheat 
than one ounce of Tordon to take it out. But if you're coming back with sunflowers the next year, that can that can bite you, or even soybeans. You know, you can see the soybeans are gone. The residual in that one can come back to get you. But the real classic on the Tordon, what it does different, again, it's hard and callous, but it will get what's called kind of a strapping, where it will grow out and grow kind of long. And if we had another week on this, those leaves would get long, and they will have that deformity in it. And that's kind of, uh, kind of classic on that. You know, here it's going that way. It's kind of the opposite of what the banville does, where it pulls it back. This it'll grow it out. 